Alcova Mortgage is here for good. We are locally owned, value great communication, and are committed to our Covington community. Call Alcova Mortgage Covington at 540-962-7152 or visit alcovahighlands.com to get in touch for your mortgage lending needs. Alcova Mortgage, NMLS ID 40508, NMLSConsumerAccess.org, equal housing lender, terms and conditions apply, all loans subject to credit approval. What up, what up, what up, though? Ball Hawk Show. What up, what up, what up, though? Ball Hawk Show. It's between 45 and 60 minutes today. I don't want to go too long because I want to respect people's time. You know, if you ain't got your Valentine's Day flowers and stuff, hey, man, you still got time. Blame, blame me. That's what you can do. Blame Ball Hawk. But, yeah, man, um, wanted to talk to y'all about a couple things once people load up. I know everybody got to see the uh, the comments made by both coordinators last week doing that talk with the press. I want to see what y'all thoughts were on that and give you my thoughts and break down some of the things and how they answered them and what that may mean, what that may look like. Let me see if I can pull pull up the the script of all they said for y'all. And if you want to be a, a speaker, man, just hit the request. I think you know we probably start with defense first because everybody would say that was the the weaker of the two. And then we can talk about offense. See my man, get Jacob in here. What up, Jacob? What's happening? What's happening? Nothing much, man. Just chilling, maintaining. How about you? Just gearing up for this UVA Virginia Tech basketball game, man. That too. That too. That's at seven, right? Yeah, uh, I think oh, yeah. it's on. I think it's on ESPN, maybe. Yeah, buddy. Damn, I hope I ain't competing with locker room assets doing a pregame show. I just thought about that. I don't want to compete against my homies. I think they're on Facebook right now. It's a huge game tonight. Huge game. Yeah, yeah, it is. I know we beat them the first time, and we up there, right? We go, we up there. Yeah, right? we we up in Blacksburg, uh, but uh, a lot of things I've been seeing today. If we, if we can sneak out a win in Blacksburg, uh, it's looking promising. Yeah, man. You know, anything I think you still have to you have to have a strong showing in the turn ACC tournament for sure. I think if you could get like two wins in the ACC tournament, that could that'll definitely. Put it Help. put it this way: if they if they lose one game from here on out in the regular season, I think they maybe only need one win in the ACC tournament. Two losses, okay. at least two wins in the ACC tournament. All right. No, I like that. But, I like but, that. But they can't they can't lose against Florida State or Louisville or, or pro, it's probably a wrap. You say they can't lose to either one of those two teams because both of those teams. Uh, I guess Florida State would be a quad two win, but that Louisville team they got they they have a losing record. So if they lose to Louisville, um, that won't. I don't think that will bode well. Yeah, man. But they got to they uh, got to go to Miami, um, which is tough, and then they play Duke at home, which is I mean it's tough playing Duke whether it's home or on the road. But if, I mean mm-hmm. they beat them once, who say they can't do it again? Yeah, that's true, man. That's true. I don't even know when the last time that happened. Uh, do, do you, that we swept? <laughs> yeah, that, that was probably a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, bro. I don't. I don't remember that either. That might be back. That might be back when Ralph played. Honestly, yeah, it might have. Yeah, definitely might have been when Ralph played. Because uh, it ain't been recent. I don't know, but this uh, so Tech's coming into this game with five wins in a row. We coming in with four wins in a row. Okay, so it should be interesting. 
And Tech had high hopes for their program oh, this year, too. I mean, as kind of disappointing as it's been, they, they're penciled in as like a between a ten, 8 and 10 seed right now, which I find crazy. But it's the way they do all those like uh, uh, Ken Palm rankings and stuff like that. Yeah, they was talking real spicy though. Like the and Tech's about to set the world on fire. They, they, the Petty Hawk ain't ain't forgot all that energy they had before the season. Yeah, yeah. They, um, but if it to be real, if it won't for those two losses against Navy and JMU, I think it's a whole other conversation. We probably a shoe in, but but with those two losses, it makes things real complicated. Oh, definitely, man. And before before we go any further, man, shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to Abra Insurance. Go to Abra Insurance for all your insurance needs. That's Home Business Auto Life Insurance. The great people at Able. Service in the state of Virginia for over 20 years. Also, it's Valentine's Day, but that don't mean you can't put in an order at manscaped.com, man. Use that promo code, the Ballhawk Show. Um, and people thought I was joking. I'm dead ass serious. 20% off. 20% off. Of your total order, go get you that lawnmower 4.0 now. Got an LED light, waterproof. It won't it won't cut you, so you can just you know put your little designs and stuff like you giving yourself a fade. So go to manscaped.com. Also, man, Alcova Mortgage. Make sure you got Alcova Mortgage. Um, they're locally owned. Value great communication. Are committed to our Covington community. Call Alcova Mortgage. Covington at 540-962-7152 or visit Alcova Highlands Spring Highlands dot com. I keep saying Highland Springs. Alcova Highlands dot com, man. Make sure you check them out. Proud sponsors of the Ball Hawk Show podcast. All right, let's get to it. First of all, salute and congratulations to Bryce Perkins, Dwayne Stoops, and what's my guy from the video? God dang it. Uh, how the freak did I forget his name? I just wanted to make sure I didn't forget his name and I forgot his name. But it's three Wahoos that got rings. Dig it, Hawk, you're fired. Hold on. I'm going to find it. I'm not going to find it. But he's a, um, he works in the video department. McCray, yeah. So salute to them. Super Bowl champions for the L.A. Rams. I was about to say St. Louis. That's how you know I'm old and washed. I was about to get the cities all mixed up. So disrespectful. Um, so that game was fun. Y'all guys want to share your thoughts on, on what y'all saw last night? Did y'all enjoy the game overall? Can y'all still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What you, uh, what you? I thought offense and defense. Defense was a little more impressive, mm-hmm. but uh, I think honestly, I know mean, you're always going to talk about the quarterbacks, but the Rams' defensive line really controlled that game in the by the end of the game, and uh, I think that the Bengals got a bright future, but. Yeah, I think it was definitely the Rams' time. I mean, I'm super happy that Bryce, people want to say practice practice squad players, basically are play, uh, people who are part of an assignment but don't do nothing. But I think that's BS. He's helped everybody get there just as much as anybody else. So I was, I was stoked to see him get a ring. Hey, man, for the record, Bryce is on the active roster. He's just inactive, and I was a practice squad player myself. For anybody that want to disrespect practice practice squad players, practice practice a week and let me know how you feel. <laughs> let, let me know Facts. if you had to say it, <laughs> Facts. And I, honestly, um, Bryce has got a bright future. Like, I think he's going to have, if not with the Rams, some big opportunities elsewhere. Um I like what I saw in the preseason, um, and sky's the limit. Yeah, McVay likes him, man. He speaks highly of him. He speaks highly of him. Go ahead, Bama. What up, what up, what up? What up, though? Okay, I thought that 
call on holding was horrible. I've been surprised. I've heard a little conversation about it, but it kind of made up for that no call on that face mask earlier in the game. Which which one on the you mean on the linebacker on cup? Yeah. Yeah, he held him. Oh, you think he held him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they had a few holding penalties. He, on he got him, he got him with the he got him with the little little tug and around the and, side of the way and undercut. Yeah. Well, there was such him. a huge no call on the face mask that on the on the Bengals touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, it was man, and, and that's and that's one of the things that I I personally feel like with Jalen Ramsey, he tried to sell it so much that if you feel somebody's pulling your face. Usually your reaction is, oh, I'm going to pull you with me. I'm going to make sure you don't make a play on the ball. Um, and it's like he tried to really sell it. But he actually got face masks. Like everybody thought he was faking until you saw the replay. And it was clear. I mean, T. Higgins just went to compete for the ball. And, um, yeah, it was a no call. So let's talk about why the offensive players always get MVP and not the <laughs> defensive players. Yeah, just like the quarterbacks always get MVP. And the quarterbacks got the uh, win-loss record because they sell. Von, Mil- Von Miller won it the year uh, the Broncos beat the Panthers, I think. And that's because Peyton Manning was so pedestrian, they had no choice. That's, that's, that's facts. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, man. I mean, it's one of the things that with Aaron's last two plays and he had two sacks, I felt like – like you, you got to give him that to me, right? Because it, it almost is like fitting of Von Miller's. I know Von Miller had the, the the strip sack and things like that, but those last two plays, like, was an exclamation mark. Oh, like, all right, he got two sacks as well. We know how disruptive he is, and I know Cooper Cup had the two touchdowns. Um, but if you wasn't going to give it to Matt Stafford, I would have gave it to Aaron Donald before Cooper. And then the last thing I want to say is um, I did love the tweet from the um, from the Chiefs player that Apple had um, taunted back at Apple. I did think that was a great response. <laughs> oh, Eli Apple, man. Eli, man. I call him Apple Butter now. That first touchdown by Cooper Cup, there ain't no damn excuse to blow a damn short zone where Cooper is – your only threat. All you got to do is sink. And I don't know what the heck he was looking at. Like, what are you doing? Come on, man. You you on the big stage. You you in the pros. You make the big bucks. That's that's high school. Response. Like, that's the first thing you teach in high school in short zone. Sink. One threat. Sink. Three by five release. You know it's either a dig or a corner route. Sink. Eli was eating a lot of crow. He was. Humble thyself, sir. Hey, yo, bodybuilder, what you doing, man? <coughs> what? Yeah. What up, man? What's happening? What's happening? You in you in the gym? Yeah, I uh, uh, just left. Um, I, we <laughs> we I had to uh, ran to a Cincinnati fan in there, and I had to break it down to him real quick that Joe Burrow could possibly be Dan Marino. I don't think yeah, he could man. Would ever smell it again. Mm. Look at their division. We're not talking Kansas City or Buffalo. If Pittsburgh gets a serviceable quarterback, they're better. Joe Burrow has never beat Cleveland yet, and Lamar Jackson is coming back. They could possibly be dead last in that division next year. They need to get a dang offensive line. They ain't got a shot. They got to get two tackles. They got to go shop and get two tackles. Or these guys that are the starting ta- uh, that were starting this Super Bowl and this year and this playoff, really work on their craft and get better because he's getting like he getting uh, David Card. He getting hit and sacked a lot. Didn't they break the record last night on sacks? Yeah, he tied. Yeah, they tied Roger Style Buckets. Okay, I didn't know if they got the eight or not. No, nah, the last one should have been eight, but he threw it away. <laughs> But, um, yeah, man, it's unfortunate, man. And sometimes Joe Burrow could do himself a service, too, by getting getting rid of the ball. Like, as it's his gift is a curse. He He's good at taking shots, but his his ability of 
you know, making plays downfield can be a detriment because he's patting the ball. It's like, y'all, just sometimes just check it off and get the defense alignment off rhythm and they not time you up and un- and and meeting you at a, at the same spot and then you take your shot down the field and it's almost like they realized what he was trying to do and they started getting home and once they started bringing that linebacker on top of us over top of the center and the center couldn't help and Donald started just bullying he's just was nice. Joe Mixon gas down the stretch why was P Ryan in the game at the the final play I don't know, on that third and one. Yeah, I mean, because I was like, where's Mixon at? Is he he's gassed? Because he ran a lot. And yeah, I was like, nah. I was like, he needs to be on the field right now. <laughs> that's a good question, man. I know, I didn't even think about that. Like, why was – because I know P. Ryan, everybody was amazed that Aaron just pulled him back, and P. Ryan's a bigger back too. But you got to factor in Mixon and his ability to hit the hole and his jump stop capability as well. Maybe he get that third and one. That second and one got me thinking, like, what was going on with Chase and Burrow? Like, why are you throwing it so far over him? Like, was it a read route? Like, what what's going on in that second and one to where you, you play, think you're playing with house money and you run that third down because they're playing soft coverage and Aaron Donald just shows why he's dominant. Like, he single-handedly – destroyed the blocker and pulled the back with one arm and sat down to where he couldn't even get a forward lean and fall. Why did they even run in his direction at that point? Huh? Why did they even run in his direction? Go, will you see him? You go opposite way. A lot of people run at the known, like, pass rusher. I don't, did y'all see the, uh, when the Rams went down on that drive to score to take the lead late, mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all remember they had a fourth and one, and they gave the ball to Cup on a on a on a, yep. And I don't know why the Bengals didn't take a freaking note out of that and, and do you give the chase and one. I don't. I'm, I'm I might be old school, but to me, I don't care if you you didn't get it on third and uh, third and two. I just don't get. Throwing the ball when you're that close to a first down. I mean, if you don't get one yard, you didn't deserve to win the game. But when you when you playing against a defensive line like that, you do yourself a disservice by giving them any chance to get to the quarterback. Yeah, that's true. I, I will say the Rams were smart because they 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 running game was terrible. But they they outflanked the defense by utilizing cup. Um, and his ability to get upfield and make proper cuts because Akers and, and uh, what is it, Henderson, they were pretty – well, basically Akers, he only averaged like 1.7 yards a carry, so he was neutralized. And that front four did a very good job. The front seven did a good job. I just felt like the secondary just let, let, the, let the squad down in the sense of when they needed them to make plays, it wasn't nowhere to be found except for that interception. Um, which was a ricochet, but um, did you see how scared they were to give that ball to Acres <laughs> at the end of the game? After he oh fumbled yeah, the, after he fumbled those times against Tampa Bay, he lost some tr- trust because yeah, they would did. not give him that ball on that last drive. Yeah, buddy, I like how they ran the quarterback sneak that first down after that pi, so the clock will run a little bit, and then man, you, you go to one on ones, you see single coverage. That throwing phase is pitch and catch. People don't realize how easy that get how easy that is. I would rather force you to run the slant and use the end as a mirror to get his hands up and see if a backer can get underneath. I think it's more of an error throw if you force the slant versus taking away the slant and defending the phase. These days you could these guys have mastered throwing phase, man. Like it's it's easy money now. Honestly, if OBJ doesn't go down with that knee injury, which it looks like it's an ACL, sadly, um, if he don't go down, I don't really even think the game is very close. Um, it may, may be within 14, but uh, when OBJ went down, you saw that offense just look pedestrian because they were doubling cup. It was mm-hmm. and basically saying, if you beat us with uh, Van Jefferson or some of these other guys, kudos to you, but you ain't beating us with cup. Now there at the end, cup just – did what stars do, and he 
and he took over. But uh, once OBJ went down, that's when it really got interesting. Um, but I think if OBJ stayed in the game, I'm not saying it would have been a blowout, but I think it – I just had a feeling it was going to at least be a, a two-touchdown win. I, that's the feeling I got. I don't know about y'all. Yeah, it would def- I mean, the game was – pretty much more wide open for that offense. Um, you had more Odell on on Eli Apple, in a sense. And I like what they did with Cup that last series. So people got to realize the one thing about Matt Stafford is he played with Calvin Johnson. So he understands how to target his top receiver no matter the coverage. That's the one thing I love about Matt when they asked him about it. He was like, look, man, I just told my guy, it's crunch time. I don't care what they running and who's on you. I'm getting the ball to you. And for years, that's what he did with Calvin Johnson. Now, granted, Calvin Johnson is 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", whatever he is, was an avatar. But we know this is a quarterback that's going to identify, damn it, I got to get the ball to 10. And they did some reduced splits with him. They did some short like short motions with him to try to get him moving or put him in advantageous situations to where you, if you try to bracket him, he's defeating one by alignment or by motion. And uh, Matt made a big throw. Uh, I want to say that last throw on like a, a bang eight that they did where he got it in between the linebacker and the safety. He put on the rope. Um, so he was making some throws that, that were big time that a lot of people won't give him credit for. And um, this Super Bowl win has you looking at Matt Stafford differently because if you check him right now, He's like 11th all time in passing yards, and then he's like the fastest quarterback to 20,000 yards, fast quarterback 30,000, then 40,000. So he has all these little stats behind his name. Now we know how Super Bowls are with quarterbacks. So it'll be interesting to see how he's perceived now that he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. So how about those? I, how about those rumors that uh, Aaron Donald might retire? That was yeah, crazy. eight years in the NFL, only 30 years of age. Um, that's a guy that understands the, the, the beating that he takes and how much training it takes to prepare for each season. Um, everybody dreams of going out on top, going out on their terms. Like, unanimous all-pro again, multiple defensive player of the year awards. Um, everybody – calls him the best defensive player. I'm like, he's the best player in football. And to walk away, that's that's dope. At 30, that says a lot. Man. You see it a lot more now, though. I was talking to my dad last night while we were watching the game. And recently, I mean, you had – I mean, some of it was – some of them were injuries. Like, uh, I mean, Andrew Luck in his neck. Um, Luke Keekley in the concussions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jordan Reed in the concussions. Uh, Aaron Donald, I mean, the dude gets triple team. He's probably, I mean, he dominates, but I can imagine the beating he takes. You're seeing it more and more, these careers uh, being a little bit shorter than you would expect. Yeah, man. And that, that, and that, and that's a salute to them for, for having financial literacy and understanding that football doesn't hold dominion over them, understanding and being um, at peace with the next phase of their lives. Cause a lot of times guys just don't want to walk away from the game because they don't know what else to do. They identify themselves as a football player and a football player alone. But when a guy can walk away before everybody's ready for him to leave, that should be respected and applauded. Cause that's showing you that, Hey, this doesn't hold dominion over me. I have an identity. Um, I'm comfortable with myself and I could be successful in my next phase of life. So, uh, salute to Aaron Donald and whatever choice that he makes. Um, they're trying to say that Sean McVay may walk away now, which because he's talking about a family and things of that nature. So who knows, man? I, I, a lot of times, like with, with Aaron Donald, I can understand why folks may be thinking he may retire. But I'm saying, look, I'm saying he's only playing eight years, but he's still fairly young at 30. Like he takes care of his body. But it's all about does he want to continue to put his body through that process? So, salute to him, man. I'm 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 anxious to see what old, what happened with Odell, man. I'm definitely happy for him. He sort of shut the hell up, juice to everybody. I thought he was washed. Um, he's to me, I never understood why people think he's an issue. The only time he's had an issue is when he got beat up by the damn kicking that. Other than that, he ain't never done nothing to nobody. You know. Hey, Hawk. Yeah. Aside from football. 
I feel like we have to put a little piece of this show on that halftime show, bro. That was that was lit. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, sir. Mary J was still doing her bop out there. Snoop was still walking. And uh Kendra Lamar shut it down. My man 50 Cent came from the ceiling again, took us back to 2001. Eminem, bro. God. I mean 2003, not 2001, 2003, 2004. What, 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 50 Cent? Yeah, Eminem. Eminem took the knee. I don't know what he took the knee for, but they say he took a knee. I ain't getting that, you know. You took a knee. I uh-huh. read that I read that it was a little bit of two things on the knee. One was a homage to Colin Kaepernick, and another was a homage to uh, Pac. To Pac, mm-hmm. yeah. I like yeah. how they played the, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish yeah. Pac was a liar to, to Heck the, yeah, shut that down. Pac would have cursed, too. He would have Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They did not. I noticed that. I was like, I didn't hear a single curse word. <laughs> yeah, man. But salute to like, the hey, halftime man. show. Salute to the national anthem. She rocked that joint. Um, salute to the game, man. Like I said, salute to the Wahoos. Bryce Perkins, my man. Charles Dwayne Stoops, my big brother from NFL Europe and playing here together at UVA. That's my guy, man. I'm super proud of him. I found myself rooting for the Rams because of Bryce. But mm-hmm. a little part of me was rooting for the Bengals because I know how much Kyle Guy loves the Bengals. And, yeah, I, was, and, and I was like, oh, I feel bad for Kyle Guy, but I got to root for the Rams because of Bryce. <laughs> yeah, man, salute to them. But we're going to go ahead and transition on to the coordinators. The coordinators were available to the press last week, and they talked about <clears throat> their vision for the program as far as their scheme and what they would like to improve on for previous years and that outlook as far as, like, who's on the roster and the depth of things like that, um, did everybody have a chance to kind of get the gist of what they talked about? Or did they need me to go through any of the script or anything? Nobody's saying that. Oh, ain't number two. Two of y'all speak. Hey, Mark, man, what's up? Man, I see you still been muting, bro. You can speak whenever you're ready. Hey, ball hawk. What's up? Hey, I just wanted to uh, tell you, you know, you were talking about that audio video. Uh, that's James McCray. James McCray, McCray. Yep. There we go. I did get his last name right, McCray. Oh, my yeah. God. And uh, I just wanted to say a couple things uh, real quick. Uh, number one, I love you as ball hawk. I love you as the ball player. And I especially love you as that petty hawk, man. <laughs> and, uh I'm going to tell you, uh, I know you know the answer to this because you ran the program a lot now, and, uh, you know, you hear so much about the transfer portal and all these defensive players in the transfer portal that, you know, I'm not a coach, so they, these coaches over at at the U know more about it than I do, but uh, it looks like to me the defense needed some work, and uh, – we're not saying much about uh, getting uh, players out of the transfer portal for our defense. Uh, I, I, I guess it's possible for that to come down the road, uh, but it looks like to me maybe the longer you wait, the the less choices you have. And, uh, you know, it looks like to me we definitely need some, or, or from the way our defense performed last year, that, you know, some emphasis – will be or should be put on getting some defensive players over there. I see we get an offense, but uh, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, so I see that. So for Mui, he took himself out of the transfer portal. Then Jalen Baker, uh, DB, just took himself out of the transfer portal. So they're both returning. Um, yeah, we, we have been getting a plethora of offensive linemen, of course, whether it's transfer or, or you know, guys signing and coming in. Been signing quarterbacks as well that are dynamic playmakers. Um, but yeah, defensively, just from what I've been getting from the coordinators, they feel like in the defensive secondary, they can really mold the guys that they have to play at a higher level than what's which we've seen in the past. Um, it's just all about learning their strengths and, and playing towards their strengths as far as the scheme, but they feel like it starts up front and getting home to the quarterback. But I think when all those linemen went into the transfer portal, that was like the need. So that's why you saw 
offensive lineman, offensive lineman, offensive lineman, offensive lineman, offensive lineman. Yeah. And you got to overcompensate in a sense. And what gets lost is we didn't really, as as many people, you know, have said, we struggled on defense. So you want to see if you could get new faces. And I think the new faces you'll see is maybe younger guys will really start to push the guys that we were used to seeing in the defensive backfield. So you may see a shake up there. So that's a good thing about the coaching staff. It's a clean slate now. So you won't have seniority over that young guy anymore because this is a new coach, so he don't know anybody. And, right. And, you know, we being honest, and not too many of those guys' tape look really good from last year and when they evaluate them. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate it, Hulk, and, uh, I was, and um, I'm going to make way because it's important people popping on here like that five <laughs> That five star player Quinn Blandon, I see down there. So, oh yeah, hey, Blackie, you know he got Blackie, nice Blackie, All I want to say is, can you hear me, Blackie? Yeah, I can hear you, Quinn. I just want to say that I love you, Blackie. That's the only reason why I joined. Because I see <laughs> you was up here. I joined <laughs> only for you because my OG Hulk, he don't, he don't like me up here. He know I I I turn it up too much, but I just wanted to tell you, Blackie, that I love you from the bottom of my heart. And you are the only reason that UVA still exists, baby. I'm trying to tell you. No one's going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you. I don't care what anybody tell you. You're the only reason why, Blackie. Well, Quinn, let me tell you, I always love you. Appreciate your brother. And, and uh, anything I can ever do, you know, I will do it for you, my, my man. Appreciate I, you. I know, Blackie. That, see, nobody know who Blackie Blue is. They don't know who Blackie Blue is. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We call him. I call him Superman. Yeah, no, nah, that's I call him Superman. Yeah, I call you know him by man. his name because it just sounds good. Blackie Blue. I yeah. see. <laughs> Black At first, Blue. I thought you was trying to joke me by nah, saying Blackie. No, nah, no, nah, he know who Blackie him. Blue is. See, look, you see, this is what I'm telling you. You think I was coming up here to do? <laughs> nope, I was coming up here to give my man his flowers. That's well, Quinn, let me tell you something, buddy. You know, uh, all my love for you, is, and, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate what you've done for UVA over the years, you and Hawk, and uh, y'all are great men. Appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. Blackie. Hey, Hawk, I do want to okay, say. Okay, guys. I do want to say, Hawk. Y'all, y'all. Hey, 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 Quinn, my wife just came down here and said that she's still looking for that cape. She can't find that cape, Hawk. <laughs> hey, y'all be good, guys, and I'll uh, close and let other people get on here. You too, Superman. Appreciate you. Okay, appreciate y'all, guys. Love you. Love you too, brother. Hey, so you were saying, Hulk, I, did, I didn't listen to nothing the coordinator said last week. Um, so on defensive side, I, of course, I keep tabs when I can. Um, so basically – we just not retaining anybody from the defensive back standpoint. We're just going to rock with the guys we got. Not saying they're a bad group of guys, but is that mm-hmm. the, the direction we're leaning towards just to get those young guys up to where they need to be? Yeah. It looks like as of right now, they're just trying to coach up the guys that are here um, because they they had a, you know, they had an emphasis on upload, like replenishing what we lost on the offensive line. So, you know, by default, I'm saying that air quotations, you got to see what you got back there. See if it was really bad as people think it is. And what can I do to fix it as far as scheme-wise and technique-wise? That's why I think. Yeah, but that's a, that's a big jump. Yeah, in my opinion, I think that's a big jump, um, in my opinion, just because, Yeah, I mean, we got who? AJ's back there. Clarity's back there. We got Cohen King back. Um uh, I mean, those guys, yeah, Sanker. Played, which Sanker yeah. played, you know, a little bit, which I get it, but yeah. I, it's that you need, like, that vet guy back there, which I think mm-hmm. will come over time. But, you know, I think at least, like, one guy from the portal that at least played some, like, you know, in a yep. lot of games and that is there because I think it provides a different leadership point of view, which I've I've talked to them. You know, I won't get into details of – what I talk to them about as, you know, the young guys coming up. But I know that's where the lack of things are, especially when I came in. I knew I had, you know, a lot of help from Ant. So he t- he took me under his wing completely and said, yeah, this is how we're going to do things. 
And I think it's kind of hard right now for them to do that right now because it's, it's, ba- it's basically about to be the blind leading the blind at this rate. Mm. And, mm-hmm. and, like, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying they can't do it. But I just think they're going to they're gonna have to go get somebody in this portal and say, look, you're going to have to basically – we're going to mold you, but you're going to have to mold them at this rate. Because that trickle effect that, you know, Hall put in place of saying – Oh, if you're, you know, you're a senior here, it's going to be a freshman ready to grow the chain and, and grow up and do that. But as we're seeing it, that didn't happen either. So they yeah. don't have to hit this portal. It, I'm sorry. Like at the end of the day, it, you're going to have to hit the portal at the end of the day. Like I've, I've seen it yeah. firsthand. I've seen the kids in the portal firsthand. We're going mm-hmm. to have to hit the portal. And if, and like Blackie was saying, we're going to have to hit it now because if we don't hit it now, we're going to be late to the ball. Like we've been late to everything. Mm. No, I You're- think, I think you made a great point, man. How you pointed out how, how ant leadership helped your transition. And so this is not a knock on, on Clary or Cohen. Yeah, no, no, but no, it's no, one no. of the things, yeah. it's one of the things is this, it's like that sweat equity, right? When you came here, ant was an established guy around the ACC these guys aren't looked at as established guys. So if you're a young guy coming in, what's the respect level as far as their stripes? Like, am I really going to listen to you? Like, yeah. when Ant says something yeah. to you, his resume made you be like, oh, I'm listening to you. And we know oh, that. Yeah. we all been Absolutely. there. Some dudes we look at, we be like, man, whatever. You trying to sabotage me. I don't know. Just based off the resume. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I don't, I don't think we have that right now, which I understand because I mean, I mean, Joey left. Joey was, you know, that guy. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of the situation he was in, Joey was our guy. Yep. Um And we, we don't have that. Like for us, our biggest thing with us was our safeties were our communicators. Our safeties led the defense. Yeah, I played with Henry Coley, Day Day, all those yep. guys up front. You know, they led up front for me. Like I didn't mm-hmm. have to control none of that. But then as, you know, in the back end, it's Ant leading all of us back there. Then after Ant left, I led everything. Yep. Like, Mike yep. handled the line, but everything was coming through me. And that's how I and that's how I led it. That's how I taught it. That's how I taught Juan. That's how I taught Joey. But, like, when we get to this point of the transition, we don't have that right now. Like, and it's, now go we got to see how Joey taught Clary – how he taught Cohen King, how yeah. he taught Sanker his last year. Yeah. But and yeah. and I think and you know, I don't know how that went, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I, I can only imagine it it probably wasn't as good as we think just because of everyone was worried about something different going on. Yeah. And which I understand, you know, we're we're dealing with, you know, we're winning, then we start losing, then we start losing. Okay, now you gotta start kind of worrying about yourself, which, you know, I understand, you know, you got a future, you want to do this, you want to do that. But at the same time, it's, we're back to square one again. You know, yeah. we don't have that. And I told them this, I, I sat down and told these guys, there's no leadership in the back end. I've had conversations with those guys. I told these guys things to do, you know, if they do it, they do it. You know, if they don't, you know, to each his own, but I I noticed that, and, you know, you've been there when I was there. You know, I I got into it with them a couple times on certain occasions just because of how I am and how I led. But we don't have that dominant guy on our defense right now. Like, granted, we have one of the best quarterbacks in football right now and Brandon right now, but he can't do it all. Like, he can't lead an offense, control him, and control the defense at the same time. Like, it's just, it's impossible. It's, it's impossible. And we're going to need someone with a little vet in them, whether it's from Clarity or, you know, Cohen or someone out of the transfer portal that's been through it to step up and be like, look, this is how it's going to be done because it's not going to change. Like, I had Dante. I had Micah. I had all those guys right in front of me that that bought into that. It's hard to bring in guys that are at the same level as you. It's hard. No, that's that's, a just, fact. that's just speaking from experience and that's just understanding my role as a captain on a team. It's hard to lead someone at the same level as you because, like you said, it's going to be like, but you don't, you haven't proved yourself to me. 
Like, you have no stripes right now. No one on the team really has stripes. And ain't nobody – who's going to respect who at this rate? Yeah, I, man. I, I think, Quinn, I think you're spot on. It, especially um, – I'll say especially a safety position particularly. Um, I think there is some – some guys at the corner position that can stand out. Bratton's still there. Um, uh, AJ's still there. Uh, there's a couple of real quality guys that can contribute at the corner. I'd still like to add another corner. But safety particularly, like you said, is kind of like the quarterback of the DBs. Mm-hmm. And I worry that the it's not that the talent's not there, but the experience of playing isn't there. And it'd be nice to at least grab one guy, like you said, that has some experience at the safety position to really take control and kind of call the shots back there, kind of like you and Ant did, um, because that that is probably the most worrisome position, I think, right now in my head on the defense side of the ball. I also would like to add some depth, like Tony Elliott said, on the D-line. Not necessarily we don't have the guys that can start, but at least depth. Um, and I feel pretty confident about the linebackers, but – I agree with you. Uh, we need to hit that transfer portal um, because everybody else around us is. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good point you brought up. I mean, yeah, we have corners, but I've done play with corners, and they don't care about much going on with the calls. They just want to lock in and play that guy. That's what they want to yeah. do. They that's just want to say, I'm locked in. That's a buck, call. that's a buck. Like, yeah. I mean, I get it. I understand it. And I and I tell, you know, corners I've trained, you know, over the time being of saying, like, look, like, you still got to know what's going on. Like, if a safety gives you the call and you know it's not the right call, I expect you to say, no, I'm, I'm this is the call. But a lot of corners aren't going to do that because they're just like, the safety is always my guy to tell me what to do. And I listen to them and they're, they're who I listen to. So, you know, we got good corners out there, but like you said, I personally think we need at least two more corners to step up personally because it's, it's, it's attracting me out there. People get tired. Things happen. You have to have depth, and I think that's the biggest thing we don't have as a defense. And if you look to prior years, and I've did studies on this, I've looked at rosters, and I did all this firsthand, and I've seen the way our depth on defense switch from defense to offense if that makes sense. We're going from – we used to have the most depth on defense where if someone at least got hurt or couldn't play, somebody could come in and play at some rate, some fashion, or whatever. They could do that. Offense, it really wasn't too much we could do. Apparently, you know, no one was winning games. We weren't winning games. We weren't putting up points. We weren't scoring. We had the talent, but we didn't really have all the missing pieces. Now our offense found their missing pieces – and we lost our missing pieces on defense. And so depth will be our friend. And I think, like, yeah, we need offensive line because all that, whatever, I'm not going to get into that today because I already <laughs> feel some type of way about all that. D-line, I already feel some type of way about all of that as well. But I just think, for me, knowing the game and understanding the game at a high level that I did, if you don't have depth, you don't win at the end of the day. Like, yep. cool, cool, like, and I, and now I, I get it from being there firsthand, and I understand, like, yeah, you want at least transfer portal guys, but, like, I've seen us, like, you know, I've seen us, I don't discredit no kid getting an offer from us, but I'm starting to look at tape, and I feel like we've just been throwing offers at kids just to say we're throwing offers at kids, and th- that's not going to help us in the class of 22, I'm sorry. At this rate, we're behind the eight ball. We've been behind the eight ball. And if we don't step up now, it's only going to get worse. Like, I get it. Yeah, you want kids that you can come in and develop, all that. Cool. I I get it. But all those ships have been burned at this rate, and everything has been downhill. We're going to need guys with experience. Like, we're going to need guys that can give you at least one to two years so that these other guys can build off of that. Because we're, we're basically about to throw everybody in the fire, which people need it, but we're about to just throw people in the fire. And it's going to and it's gonna reflect. I, I've seen it firsthand. I, I've seen it. I've watched it. We're throwing people in the fire. Like, granted, I, I, love, I love our secondary, but we need a lot of work. 
I love those kids. I love those guys. I talk to them personally. But we need some work. Our D-line, we need some work. Yeah, our linebacker cores, they're good. But they need some work. Trust me. I, I will point out every teach tape, everything. That's the, I think that's what I'm about to start doing. I'm about to start breaking down film and putting a teach tape for everybody because I don't think people understand what I be seeing and what I be saying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do it, Grant. Do it. Own. <laughs> but I just think that's where we are now as a as a defensive unit. Offensive unit, you know, we had all that shenanigans going on. But I think with all our weapons coming back, us getting linemen, I think our offense will still be the same. I think they're just going to elevate them some more with, you know, great experience. You know, Coach Beck did a hell of a job coaching nine. You know, even though no one liked him, he still was putting up top five performing offenses each year. Regardless if no one likes it or not, he was. But I think with this NFL experience he's bringing to us now, I think it's only going to elevate their game even more on offense. And I think defense-wise, I think we're going to be good. I'm not saying that. I'm going on record now. I'm, and everybody, do not get mad if our first year is not good, okay? Don't have these high expectations that we're going to be <laughs> going to the college football playoffs, all right? Do not think that. I know we're we're strong-minded, you know, supporters, but do not think that because it's not going to happen, okay? I promise y'all because y'all did that when Mendenhall got here and some of y'all were butthurt because it didn't happen. And y'all were upset we went 2-10 and ten again and y'all was ready to jump ship once again. So y'all better and you're get thou- ready. <laughs> hey, you're a thousand percent right, Quinn. And and I think what you hit on the most, it's, it's not even though we need all the athletes we can get. I think if anything, what you're right about the most is the lack of a leader really stepping out. Yeah. And like you said, there was you, there was Micah. Like those, y'all yeah. took it head on and y'all grabbed it and y'all went with it and y'all were leaders. I, I'm with you. I haven't seen anybody really step out and take that leadership position. Now, there could be guys on the roster that can do that. We have not seen that yet. So yeah, you're right. I, I think there is. You've got to find I, those guys. Personally, yeah, I personally think there is. Personally, in my opinion, I, I really honestly, truly think there's a guy on this team right now, I'm not going to say names, that can do it easily by himself and will run it. I know for a fact. I see it. I can I can sense it. But it's going to take the coaching. It's going to take him to realize that. But, like, I go back. Yeah, Michael was a great leader. Ant was a great leader. Henry, Day Day. And, and I don't think a lot of people know. Like, Dante Wilkins, right, my best friend, my that's my dog. Like, we got the same birthday, everything. I remember a couple years ago when they played in the belt in the um, ACC championship and they played Clemson. I was still in Carolina playing for Carolina. I went to the game. I remember going in the locker room, and when I seen a coach or Dante was a recruiter at the time, I seen a recruiter more fired up than the players. I was ready to strap up and go out there with him and play with him one more down. We don't have a guy right now that you would say, oh, I want to strap up right now and play with him one more down. We don't have that guy right now. And that's awesome. the difference. Of, that's the difference of levels right there where if you're saying guys that are done playing, like Wally Rayner, if he had one more down and I had one more down, I'm going out there with him. Just because of the way he talks, the way he carries himself, the way he moves, that's what I moved to. Right now, we're moving to, okay, subpar things. Oh, all right, we didn't get them, but we'll get them next time. No. Like, I remember <laughs> my years playing, oh, we oh we had moral victories. We didn't win the game. Oh, but that other team knew what time we was on. We ain't win the game. Oh, but we was we were punishing them. And Coach Rub always said, make them pull the ambulance to the to their field right there. To the end of they, um, the tunnel, make them pull the ambulance there. And I guarantee you, we showed it every week. We didn't win the game on defense because we couldn't score on offense. But I guarantee they felt that. Don't nobody feel us right now. Yeah, I, I agree, Quinn. I like one thing that I miss, <laughs> miss seeing, and I know this may sound bad, but like when you was there, like you said, 
for example, when y'all played Tech, I still remember the the video of you talking trash on the sideline to that guy on the field. Like you was, regardless, you were gonna let him know you was there. I'm there. Like, I don't care if I'm day. losing or not. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. And like, but see, it's I, you're right. Different levels it's, of. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying you're right. It, like that needs to be present. You, regardless of like how the game's going, like you need to have that dog in you. Like you need to let them know you are there, and you're gonna be there all night. <laughs> oh no, yeah, for sure. And I don't, I don't think we have that right now, which is, which is kind of sad. You know, I get it. It's sad, but me personally, yeah, that's not how. I, that's not how I roll. Not how I rock in life. I rock only one way, one way only, and that's to be a dog at all costs. I don't play that, and I think that's where we lack. And I hope these coaches know what they're getting themselves into because it's a it's a different lifestyle. It's, it's different kids you're working with. And and I think the coaches, you know, Mendenhall did a, a, a decent job with us. But, they, I mean, honestly, they, if you look from the outside in, they look like they coached us very well. They did. But we kind of coached ourselves because we had to groom ourselves in a sense. We didn't – we just played football. Like, that was us. Now it's more, you know, I get it. And if any kids up here, you know, that are being recruited and understand that, get your grades, make sure you have good grades, pay attention in school. But we, we need dogs. And if we don't have dogs, then I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like, that's it, bottom line. Like, we need straight dogs. And if you're not a dog, I do not want you at all. And on that field, around the facility – in, in the jerseys I wore, I don't even care. Like, you can call me whatever you want. I just don't play that, and I would never play that. Like that lineman commit that we got, you, the boy Snoop. You could watch his film and know that's a dog. Like, I love him. I love <laughs> him. I told him I will take any 15-yard penalty you get, and I will take the punishment for you. I love him. I told him and his dad that personally to their face. Yeah, that's what's up. He is a dog, though. He he definitely a dog, man. And all that you said was, was spot on, Quinn, man. And, and, like, on defense, if you look at a lot of top defenses and you may have your outliers, but a lot of times, man, you need, like, Three levels. You're gonna have that that leader on the defensive line, the leader at linebackers, but it's nothing like having that leader at the safety position. Like it makes a huge difference. Because as he said, corners, most of the time we're not even coming to the huddle. We ain't coming in and talk y'all head off. Like we gonna cover and make sure we gotta do what we gotta do. But that safety is that orchestrator. Like he get everybody in tune, the checks calling out alignments, what the formation is, what to check for, what they see. And it's just a different vibe, bro. Like, even when Bryce Hall was the top corner, let's not forget that game versus Pitt, Joey Blunt went crazy. Um, And when when Bryce came into his own, Juan was playing the safety. And the year before that, Quinn was. So it was like, you could go down, the list goes on and on. We got top defenses here at UVA. Just look at who was playing the safety position and how they was performing, and their leadership, and their mentality. It jumped out. I don't even got to say who was my safety here. <laughs> we know the captain was that guy. And then Adrian Burnham right beside that him guy. was that guy. Th- like, that both guy of them too. dudes. Yeah. So, both of them dudes, like, it's very important for you, you to, for you to be stable and led by those dudes that line up at the safety position. When it comes to the secondary, you can have a top flight corner all you want to on every level. As much as we love Revis, it was a little dude that's a coach now named Lil, uh, uh, Leonard was out that mug running around causing havoc. It's like an unsung hero, but we look at Richard Sherman. It was a dude, Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor back there at the safety position, letting people have it. I mean, that safety position is important, man. Ed Reed for what he did with Baltimore. You saw when Charles Wilson moved to safety or he moved to the slot, 
was similar to a safety was at Green Bay because those guys are so smart and in tune. It's infectious. It's more infectious from the inside out versus the outside in. There's only so much a shutdown corner could do for your defense. But you need somebody in the middle from that secondary that's just as vocal and just as nasty. Rodney McLeod, when he was here, nasty. And and like you said, Mod, like it, the physicality, the dog mentality, all that, we want that. We need that. But like y'all said, a lot of the times last year, there was a call, there was some miscommunication, and people were just straight out of position. Yeah. And that drives coaches crazy. It drives fans crazy. You need that guy back there at safety to make those calls to keep everybody on the same page. Now, I know crap's going to happen. Occasionally someone's going to get burnt. But to be out of position, that's not acceptable. Nope. So you need someone back there to make the calls and make sure everybody's in the right place that they need to be. Because if you get beat one-on-one and someone's just beat out, just beat you straight up, you tip your cap, say, I'm going to get you the next time. But when you're not in position, you're giving guys just a free lane to the end zone. Mm -hmm. That ain't what it's about. You're getting outsmarted. Somebody's not taking control back there and making the correct calls and, 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 and holding people accountable. I get tired of after someone gets burnt because they're out of position, Rubbing them on their – it's okay to encourage and be like, we'll get that back. But you need to be held accountable. And a lot of times there was just a lot of patting on the butt, like, it's okay. Like, no, nah, hold them accountable and encourage them at the same time. It's football. Yeah. yeah. You damn skippy. i tell you this, man. It, the, the deep – so I'm going to say this. The DB position – should never be like the wide receiver position. And what I mean by that is all that uh, 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 changing of, like, rotating, depending on what, what the offensive package is, just running in, you see different receivers running in and out. You should never see that in the defensive secondary. If it's different jersey numbers you see every game, get like, hell no. To me, that ain't good. It's going to be the all. same four or five <laughs> guys, damn it. And the, and the majority of the time, when that fifth guy coming in, we like, yo, dog, don't get too comfortable. Because that backer pissed off. He got to get off the field. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it should. I shouldn't be looking back there like, oh, shoot. Oh, they playing safety this series? Oh, hell no. Like, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Because it's like, I, I come from there where I, I say it all the time. There's nowhere in the world you can have me playing receiver here going in and out depending on what the personnel groupings is. Damn it, I'm on every personnel grouping. I should be on every one. How can I be on the field at all times? Respectfully. That's just my mindset. And that maybe that's the dog mindset. That's just what what's the what's the uh grouping personnel? What I gotta do to stay on this one? What I gotta do and get on that one. Not hey, we just like this matchup. You should like me on every matchup. That's your that's your mindset because iron gonna shop at iron. And if he he BSing, you're gonna make sure he don't touch the field. And facts, like that frustrated me so much last year. Um, it's not that I, I don't believe these certain guys deserve a chance. It, they do. And if they perform in practice, they deserve that chance in the game. But when I see the same person get burnt on the same route three times because they're out of position, at what point do you give the guy behind him a chance? To say, I could be that guy. I, that frustrated me so much last year. A couple games, I know guys have bad games, but a couple times it's like, it's time for you to take a seat and see what one of these other guys have. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's not good when football players think that they can screw up three, four times and I know I'm still going to have my spot. Like, is that a good mindset to have? Hell no. No, nah, like, but my, so my thing was frustrating. My retort to that when people say the back that the backup gotta come take the, get this work though. Cause he could be stinking it up. Just cause I'm stinking it up don't mean he's gonna put his stinky self in there too. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Petty Hall's mindset, like, dog, I know you stinking it up, but man, you ain't showing me you don't stink. So I gotta stay with this dude who's stinking right now. Respectfully. But no, I'm with you, man. Like, 
sometimes you do got a mindset like, well, shoot, we can't get no worse because you keep getting beat by the same whip route. They keep beating you with dagger. You don't know it's two ends coming right now. Sooner or later, you gotta take a you gotta take a chance, brother. Hello, you know. Sooner or later, can't keep keep getting beat or assuming you see something and they running right by you. Hello, no, I'm with you exactly, and I that's why I think I I'm I'm, I'm understanding how Quinn's feeling more and more because you saw some of the things last year and you're, and you're thinking. Damn, if the backup's playing worse than this, we in some damn trouble. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's like one of the things where – so the dog mentality is not uh, uh, an excuse to, to act the ass, but you got to see some type of – like a coach or respect a backup if he like – he slam his helmet when you get beat because he's looking like, damn, man, like put me in. Like let me get some run. That's when you sit down, you had that meeting, like what I got to do to get on the field? You know what I'm saying? What am I not doing that I can't at least get a series or two? That's when you got to have that conversation in a respectful manner to push the envelope. What do I need to do? What am I not doing good? And then you go to that starter and let them know, I'm trying to take some of your reps. Because by you looking bad, they you making it seem like I'm that much worse than you. You know? Like... As a as a competitor, that's the that's the stance you take. And look, I don't, I'm not behind closed doors. I can only make, you know, I can only assume. So I'm just guesstimating right now. I'm not telling y'all this is what happened. I'm just saying if I'm one of them backups, old Petty Hawk would have been, hey, coach, can I talk to you for a minute? Like, can can we close the door? Like, what I need to do? I, I'm trying to get some of that wreck. Like. You know, I can't keep brother long here out here in practice. I'm about to go get it because I'm about to show you that I could perform. Because a lot of times people be like, people don't know how to practice without still getting better. Some guys are brother in law, they teammates. Let them catch passes because it's their period. Oh, hell no. I hated them periods. Let them catch it. No, I'm not letting them catch it. He got to earn this. I ain't going to contact them and knock them down, but he can't be running no lazy route and I just go fuck that thing out there. Let them catch it. I used to hate those periods. Quinn used to like them periods. Hey, guys, we're going to be safe here. Let them catch it. The hell? You bre- you breaking up, bro. <laughs> Can y'all hear him? Because he's breaking up on my end. Yeah, you still sound robotic. Nah, I can't hear him. Johnny Five got you. Need more input. And the UVA Virginia Tech basketball game is on, but I did want to talk about what each respective coordinator said. Um, Coach Rudd said his main focus was being great tacklers. Absolutely. If you look at our film and ain't the first thing that, that you want to fix, yeah, yes, you got to fix the tackling, being consistent tacklers. And what will help with that is being more balanced on offense and running the ball more. And Coach Kitchen talked about being, wanting to be more balanced. Not saying it's going to be 50-50, but that we can strive to consistently run the football and be successful. So if we do get into a game where we have to slow the pace down, we can utilize the run game to set up the pass game, meaning getting four and five yards on first down or fourth and one, lining up on the center and playing power football, lining up in the red zone, pl- playing power football that sense of being balanced because I feel like if you can improve running the football on offense, you will improve your ability to defend the run on defense and tackling should come into play. So I like what both coordinators said on that front. Also, um, as far as the scheme, a lot of times you call, uh, you watch coach Rudd when he was at air force, a lot of four man fronts. Sometimes it's majority three down linemen, one overhand backer coming up. Um, so it's a four man line look and then their safeties are involved. Um, they do make plays and, and watching his, his teams play, they get to the football, bro. They get to the football. So, um, it's all about transitioning that mindset from the air force Academy here to UVA and these guys buying in. They got to understand everything you learn since you've been at UVA don't matter no more. This is a new regime. You are clean slate. So, you can't just say, well, Coach Bronco or oh, Coach Nick had me. Nah, the hell with that. This is what this coach telling you to do. You do it, and you work on that. That's what players got to understand with a new coach. What you learn is great, 
But you can't say, man, why do you got us doing this? Brother, you ain't in no position to be questioned what the new coach say. Respectfully, I'm sorry. You got you to gotta tap into it and be the best you you can be. Um, offensively, I, I'm, knowing, I'm, I'm jumping back and forth. Offensively, I like what Coach Kitchens is saying. I like what he's saying about, you know, utilizing Keaton and basically having a touch chart with him, making sure he's staying involved. He understands what he has in Lavelle Davis. He understands what he has and, uh, and Wicks and uh, with Kemp and and what the weapons we have at, at running back. And also the turnover that we had at offensive line and being smart. And, and I could, you know, see a lot of uh, bubble screens and smoke screens and, and, you know, quick games, mesh routes, trying to keep defenses off balance early, utilizing inside zones, powers, bellies, dives, stretch, get outside, just get the defensive line moved around to allow Brennan to get into the game and then start to take his shots down the field. And Brennan understanding that he doesn't have to play hero ball, and he never did that. But understanding that, yo, you can just get the, you can Tom Brady people sometimes. Just get it out quick, and then you may want to turn to a Rod, you know. And may, I know people don't like a Rod, so maybe that's a bad Joe Montana. Everybody love Joe Montana. You can be Joe Montana or Steve Young because you're left handed. But yeah, man, I, I like what what the approach that they're having. They're saying all the right things. I'll put that out there. Every coach that I've heard talk, they are saying the right things. Now, now that you're doing winter workouts, we're going to start paying attention to the actions. And when spring ball come around you, you day going right. We're going to be in there with a fine tooth comb getting that layers. But tackling, that means the spring should be very physical. Because if you want to show you can be balanced and you want to show you can run the football, well, it got to be some physical periods. Inside period, 9 on 7. Ain't no bouncing. He should heist it downhill. Thud. Huh? That's what you got to show. That's going to be a mentality. It's going to have to be a lot of hitting coming out the gate. Maybe I'm just old school, but if you come from the service academy, that means you like contact. I ain't never met somebody that came from the service academy that don't like contact. Good old pain. Huh? Coach Welsh had it. Christ, run it again. Hit someone. That's what it took. So if you run and run the football, that means you got to have physical periods. That means defensively, if you don't pack your lunch, your ass getting ran over and ain't going to take your lunch. You want your cornbread? Nah, 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 nah. I want my cornbread. And anybody else want my cornbread? You so you heard what you heard what Claude said in Ray's boom, boom, boom. You heard what Ray said. Claude tried to give up the cornbread. Ray won't have it. Claude, Claude want to be your friend. I want a bunch of Rays around me. I don't want no Claude's. Cub, Club or Ray? What's good, fam? What's up, fam? Right, I mean, you you hitting the points right on, man. You know, I think uh, the balance is going to be good uh, for Brennan. You know, as explosive as he is, explosive as they are on the outside, uh, a better running game than to be able to lean on the running game will help significantly. And it's going to keep him upright, um, but it's, it's going to keep him healthy, especially when you get a turnover at the offensive line. It's much easier to teach run blocking. You can let the guys utilize that physicality, but they have to coach that. I don't know if they have the role graders. It looks like they were in this recruiting class with the leaning towards guys that were more physical. You know, I'm watching their huddle tape. They seem to be guys that pull, they drive guys off the ball. Uh, but, you know, hey, that's a high school film, and it's definitely different at the, at the next level. Uh, I think on the defensive side, he's just got to look at what he has. Um, I mean, I know he has, has typically run a 3-4, but if you don't have the personnel to run a 3-4, you can't run it. So I think he's looking to really evaluate what he has uh, in order to be able to, to determine what's going to be. I mean, he's, he's got some players. Uh, I'm really interested to see the front. I mean, you know we've got Jameer. Uh, we've got Famui. Famui. You know, he, he had kind of an off year last year by his standards, and then he was out the year before. So I think that impacted him. So he wasn't in his group, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm interested to see the front. Uh, you know, as, as I was watching that Super Bowl yesterday, man, you know, the, the front can win your championships, you know, and when you can yes, shut sir. down the run and you spoke to tackling, and you and I talk about that at nausea. 
the the physical nature of, of of a tackling team, a physical team. That's one two. You know, you can teach the technique, but you got to come up and want to bite somebody's face off. Period. Point blank. You know, that's that's something you, you can't you can't give somebody want to when it comes to that. Back to running, the, having a run game that will help your defense be able to play versus the run because that's what Virginia has been missing. And, and, and Ray Roberts kind of put me up on game on this one, and it made perfect sense in that when you are a team that runs the ball, then you get used to practicing against a team that runs the ball. And so your run defense uh, kind of mirrors the effectiveness of what you do on offense, and it, it, it brings a physicality with it. And we have the, the absence of a running game in the last six years, and the defense is just, I mean, we couldn't stop a nosebleed when it came to running the football, uh, for, or throwing it for that matter. But let's just start with the run. You've got to be able to stop the run first uh, in order to move forward. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I like what I hear so far. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 the Jimmys and Joes got to be in place. You put them in the scheme. Uh, you scheme what you have, in, in my opinion, because that, that's going to really let me know if you can coach, is that you may not necessarily have all the personnel that you need in the short term, but if you can coach, you will put guys in a position to be successful. And you coach them up the right way. They they got a lot of want to. They got a lot of fight. You don't have to worry about that part. But you put them in positions to be successful, and I think these guys will be successful. No, I think you hit the nail on the head, man, with great analysis and, and breakdown about just the approach that the coaches have. Like when they evaluate the roster and you talk about the Jimmys and Joes, um, when you do these winter workouts, you start to really collect that data to see what the, the body, the physical makeup is, like what they need to get stronger at. Then you start to look at the foundation as far as when they start doing positional work and seeing some things up close and personal that didn't really jump out to you on film. And that a lot of young guys should be excited because it's not a preconceived notion that usually could take place with the coaching staff and you feel like you just stuck in a rut with these new set of eyes. Yo man, take advantage of it. Like really jump out in a positive way to where you become an intriguing individual when coaches really start to look at you like, Hmm, I wonder why he wasn't playing. Cause I like what I see so far. So yeah, man. Um, guys on defense definitely got to take advantage of those early opportunities uh, with these workouts, with these individual drills and, and getting in the film room and really getting acclimated with this system so they could play that much faster and not make as many mental mistakes as they have in the past. That's And that's what we always talk about is just the, simp- the things we consider simple because we ingrain in our in our craft as far as, all right, this is the first step. I know out of anything, that's not going to fool me because that's day one stuff. Like, I talked about Eli Apple, first touchdown giving up the Cooper Cup. There's no excuse to you be in the short zone, three by five release that you just don't sink and take away that corner route. Like, that's just bad football from the jump. Like, that's day one fundamentals that you teach right there. And that's some of the things that they got to get accustomed to that we used to talk about by identifying, like, Diamond, diamond bunch sets of how they got to disperse. And if uh, you playing cover two and you see number two pushing vertical, how you need to sync with number one because you have no other threat. Number two is telling you what number one is going to do and vice versa. So that type of stuff I want to see improved on because that, that shows me that the foundation work is there. Yeah, well, it's going to be it's going to really be about the technique. It's really going to be about teaching technique and and the the secondary and 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 other areas. They were they were devoid of technique, and mm-hmm. it, it it you you see it at even even in the Super Bowl yesterday. I'm looking at technique on the on the couple of plays that uh on the on the first long play that Jalen Ramsey, Ramsey. Got beat on. Yep. the technique was horrific. How were you terrible. going? How, how were you going to get in? How are you going to be in a bail? And then try to flip your hips towards, towards him. them. <laughs> and I was just like, what what do you are an experienced corner? You know, I saw him a couple of other times. You go come up and press, you don't put your hands on a guy. Yep. I'm like, why are you even up there? I mean, it's so it happens at every level. 
Yeah. You know, but the technique will save your hind parts mm-hmm. if you are teaching it right. You can always fall back on it. The technique, you know, I mean, and it's it's not that hard. You know, you in zone a man. You know, as as a corner, you in zone a man. So what technique do I do? Do I do I do a zone turn? Am I turning towards him? If I'm a bail, where is my help? Am I on the outside as I'm bailing? You know, am I bailing head up? I am not going to give a guy a two-way go at any point as a safety or a corner because I am in a bad situation if I'm guessing where he's going to go. Yep. I, I won't always know, but he's not going to have two ways to go. I'm going to give him one, and hey, I'm gonna take if, I, if I'm taking away his outside, he's not getting outside. If I'm <laughs> yeah. taking away his inside, he's not getting inside. You know, and it's just really knowing where your help is. I, I, I mean, you and I, you and I know the game. We look, we're like, okay, well, he playing his technique. He know he got help somewhere. Now, then, if the help is not there, I'm like, okay, well, maybe they running something else. You know, because mm-hmm. it, 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 when we see it, we're like, all right, well, uh, that didn't make sense. Something, something didn't marry there. Yeah, you know, it, yep. and, and so it's just. It it really is about the technique, man, and they they have to be technicians. I, I've hated to see what has happened to the secondary over the past few years because the, you know to, to my earlier point, they, it, they were just devoid of technique. They they couldn't have been being taught it because it just there's just no way that you don't improve. There's no way that I can look at a tape of of uh, I'm out there trash can juice and then. <laughs> I'm a, I, I make no adjustments to the, to the week before, and I come out and do the same thing. Uh, there is no you. You're not either watching tape. You're either not watching tape, or you're not being coached. That that yeah. that, that that makes no sense to me. And I yeah. saw it time and time and time again. But it just, bro. Yeah, you know me. I'm. I'm. I felt like I was about to throw up in the booth each week. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Yeah, man. It's one of the things where you can't you at at the end of the day, these are young athletes. It's like like you said, if the same thing keeps happening over and over, then I gotta look at okay, what is the adult eyes telling right. the young eyes? Like right. what are you saying to him? Because something's not clicking. So if you call him something and he's suspecting something, then you need to point out to the help guy, like, dude, you leaving him out to dry. Like mm-hmm. stop something has to change. And because all we see is who's ever closest to the guy catching the ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the, the human reaction is to like that guy got beat, and we've we've been on that a lot of times when we helping out, and people are like, "Damn, you got beat, bro." That my man left me out to drive. Right. I'm gonna just take it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't right. Gonna say nothing. But right. then, I'm gonna eat that. Look, yeah, we look at the film. He like, oh, that one on him. That was on him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and one of so. You know, I got to give Bryce Hall, Juan Thornhill, Quinn Blandy. I got to get those guys props because what they were great at, they were great at recognizing route combinations. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you could tell that the film study had been there. So they see, yo, they line up. I can tell that they're reading what's going on by line up. They both take off. They looking at the combinations and they will be in position to make plays. I mean, that year Bryce had 20 pass breakups. You don't do that without no understanding route concepts. Yep. You know, and so that that that's the kind of conversations that you know th- these they've got to have with these guys. And so I'm excited to, you know, for the alumni. And as we on the podcast each week, we're like, hey, okay, we all got to come back to the program. We all got to pour into these kids because as we're talking to these guys about things that we see, they'll listen because they know we've been there. And all yep. we want them to do is be successful. No, we're not trying to be their coach, but we're trying to help them be successful. You know, and the real ones, you know, they, they get to know us. They, they'll know we there for that. Yeah, and that's that, and that comes with the relationship with the coach staff. Because if I understand what's being asked of uh, a defensive back in this scheme, it's no better help that you need than somebody that's played the game. They'd be like, yo, man, why you ain't doing X, Y, Z like this? So he hears from a different person who's not right. even in there. 
Right. So now right. this kid is like, oh, coach must be telling him right because OG saying the same thing. Right. Like exactly. he said, we're just trying to reinforce what you're teaching. We're not. Right. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm trying to be an extension of you because we understand the restriction of time. So it's like, hey, what you teaching them? Because I could probably work with him when you can't. I just mm-hmm. want to make sure we're on the same page because all of us want to see that young man in this program be successful. So that's what Thanks. it comes down to. Facts, facts. And, 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 you know, if when you have that kind of relationship with the staff, though, and they understand that, bro, look, yeah, that, you got a successful program then because the alumni, uh, guys are coming back, guys are there, and you you, deb- you build such a camaraderie with, with the generations that come through the program. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the plan, man, and with the new coaching staff and Tony saying, very vocal and open about wanting alum there. So, like we said, man, you, you know, taking our time, not trying to bombard them and make it seem like we trying to tell them what to do. I just want to mm-hmm. let them know you got some ears right here. Right. And you got advocates. So whatever you need from us to, to help with the, the positions that we played and to help with their transition, with their scheme, and help apply to their young athletes, we here. And if we want to be ambassadors and speak on your behalf, to the program, to the fans, we here, but that's the thing that, you know, I just want them to know, like, the ambassadors mm-hmm. are here, and we're going to be yeah. around. Indeed, indeed. And, and bro, I want to get back to that old brand of Virginia football, because one thing that you knew about us back in the day, that when you come through the program, uh, you play in Virginia, we're going to hit your ass. You know, <laughs> real real talk. You you were gonna be hit on Saturday. Back then, which is most of Saturday. On Saturday, yep. we were, we was gonna we was gonna put a hat to that ass. And I want us to get back to that kind of mentality. You know, with it, where you play Virginia, man, boy, look at here. I I got bumps and bruises on top of my bumps and bruises, <laughs> and, and, and you taking that L home with you. You, hey, we we didn't gave you the L, and we're going to beat the brakes off your body and your mind. You know, I, I look at here. I, I, let's take it back to the old school. Take it back to the old school. And shoot, with that being said, man, that's how we – that's how you go in the space. I can't top that. Take it back to the old school. Got cover up here, getting not, real nice and physical. Got the who's up right now over the over the Hokies on the hardwood down there in Blacksburg. Last time I looked, it was 14-11, so – I know the fans multitasking in here and and listening and looking at the game. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a let the basketball team take it away. Appreciate my dog Cub and Quinn Blandon and Jacob and uh, Superman joining the spaces today as speakers and all the folks listening in. Man, y'all be on the lookout for that next lockdown podcast. We're gonna have another another one for y'all. So catch up. We just dropped the Matt Shaw. We just dropped Maurice Covington as well. So uh, yeah. Y'all, y'all check those out. The lockdown, locker room access. Go, go check that out. iTunes and Spotify. So, Cub, you got anything for the people before you get out of here, bro? Bro, no, I think you meant Maurice Kennedy. Oh, I said Covington. My bad, Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, now yeah. he gonna get me. Now he gonna get me for that because he petty. Yeah. So now, Jay, just tune in and we we'll keep 